So I'm here at the airport getting ready to go flying for the day and I'm really excited, but I wanna share my five tips to make yourself look like a pro in a Cirrus. It's excellent. So let's walk through each one of those and leave a comment if you agree or disagree with anything that I say. Always interested in learning from you. But if you find this valuable, I'd certainly appreciate a like and a subscribe to the channel. That really helps things out. But anyway, let's get to it. The top five tips to make yourself look like a pro in a Cirrus. So my first tip starts with the baggage compartment and this key. A lot of people go and look for different types of keys, but on a 2016 Cirrus and newer, we're gonna start with this big black key. And there's a small little round key for uh, older Cirruses that will do the exact same thing. But to open up the baggage compartment, all we do is take this key, we put it into the, the slot, and we can just twist it and open it. Now to properly close the baggage compartment, all we can do is literally take the key out, put it in our pocket, and then do our thing in the baggage compartment. But when we're ready to shut the door, we don't need the key anymore. All we do is just push, snap, and we're done. So the second thing to make yourself look like a pro is operating the radios right. And going from mic one to mic two to listen or talk on different radios, and rather than going around the horn, let me show you what I mean. So imagine yourself in this scenario. You just taxied out to the end of the runway at a towered airport and you're talking to ground control on mic two and radio two. And if we come up here, we can see we're exactly doing that. We're on 121.7, that's ground control, and 119.9 is the tower frequency. Now when we actually come down to make the switch, I, often our mistakes where we go around the horn on the audio panel. So rather than just going the, doing the appropriate action, which is going from mic two to mic one, which will do it. I often see people try to turn mic two off, that does nothing. They hit COM two to think that that's gonna turn it off, but secretly behind the scenes that turns on the monitor function. They'll come over to COM one and they turn the monitor function on on that. And then finally they, by process of elimination, they, they push this button and voila. If we look back up, we're still we're, we're now talking to the tower. But if we come back down, we're still monitoring ground. We can disable that. And when we actually need to use COM2 again, or the talk on transmit on the radio 2, and we switch, now, because we run around the horn a, a while back, now we can, we're still monitoring COM1. So we can disable that. So just remember to appropriately switch between each radio. Don't go around the horn, just go left and right. That will appropriately turn on and turn off whatever radio that you want to talk to. And if you truly want to monitor ground or listen to ATIS, you can put your uh, tap, tap that and listen uh, and you'll literally be monitoring that frequency. And to just turn it off, you press it and you're done. Stay nice and organized that way. So the third thing that I often run into in the best pro tip is to not let your frequency time out. This will make sure that you've appropriately programmed and entered the frequency that you want to be talking to without letting it drop out automatically. And let me show you what I mean below. So imagine this scenario, we're flying along and we get a new frequency that we need to enter. And that frequency is one, two, zero, five, five. I've entered that up here in the radio, but as you can see, the cursor's still blinking. And after a certain period of time, I didn't lock my frequency in and boof, there it went. The frequency got deleted because I didn't lock it in. I get distracted really quick and I think it's in there and I make the frequency change and I make the call and the person that we're transmitting to has no idea who we are and they say, check last assigned frequency. And here's the mistake. We did not hit enter to lock that frequency in. So I'm gonna redo this. This is the right way to do it. So one, two, zero, five, five. I'm gonna hit enter. And if I come back up here now to our radio panel, I can see one, two, zero, five, five is locked in. Because I hit enter, that is accepted and no long, I can let any amount of time pass um, and then make the flip-flop, and now we're talking on the appropriate frequency. Number four, this one's a good one, and I often need to run into this one all the time, and that is using the cursor button, pushing it in with your thumb as the enter button. 
Yeah, it's I've seen some frustrating moments. So let's go dive deep into this so you don't run into that and make it easy on yourself. Here we go. So imagine we want to look up some airport information. And we're on the appropriate page up here at the airport information tab. And we want to look at the Chicago Executive Airport, but not Gary. So in order to do this, this is where the confusion comes in. We've got to turn the cursor on by pushing in the cursor button and that allows us to edit. And what often happens is that people will get this far, they'll go K, P, W, K, and because we hit this is to light the cursor up, they think that this is the enter button. So what happens is that when we press this, boom, all of a sudden we go right back to Gary International Airport. The best way to think about this is that the cursor button allows you to edit and also undo whatever you just did. So the appropriate way to, to lock in the Chicago Executive Airport is to go K, P, W, K, and then hit enter. Now we've locked that in and we can scroll using our cursor knob and be able to go through and pan for whatever information that we need. In tip number five, loading frequencies using the waypoint information page and doing the rapid fire uh, frequency loading but there's a little gotcha. Let me show you what that is so that you don't fall into it and you've got ease in order to load your frequencies, just like boom, boom, boom. Oh. So imagine this, we're, at the, we're flying along and we wanna load our frequencies and learn more about the Chicago Executive Airport. Well, all of our frequency information is in the system and it's easy to access. So I can use this range joystick and I can click down and go one, and what this does is it changes and allows me to use uh, move this dash box line. So I'm gonna go in our flight plan and click down and highlight the Chicago Executive Airport, hit enter to learn more about that airport, and all of the information that I have is available. Frequencies, airport layout, here's our airport elevation if we need it, but I wanna specifically load all of the frequencies. Easy. I can go ahead and push our cursor in, that brings up our cursor, and we want it, there's two knobs on this. There's a skinny knob and a wide knob. I wanna take the wide knob in the center, center uh, stack here and use it to scroll all the way down. And if I come down and I hit enter, this is great. This will load up and say, hey, where do you wanna put the ATIS frequency? Well, I might want that in um, uh, COM to active and I want to load ground control in is my next frequency, F in COM to standby, easy enough. But here's the problem that I often see and run, run into, is that people will say, okay, I wanna load the tower, and I'm ready to put that in the active frequency. What ends up happening, if you look close here, there's words for COM to, or the standby frequencies are load, and the top ones for the active ones are transfer. So this is, think about transfer, it replaces it the, in the active frequency and whatever was active, it moves over. So if I wanna load our 19.9 into our radio frequency here, look at that, we've got 132.5. I'm gonna, I'm gonna acknowledge and say enter and look what happens. I've entered it, it loads 19.9 in, and it transferred whatever was active into the standby. So make sure you're aware of that. It's easy to use and be careful. You don't, I always say, load your active frequencies first and then, then your standbys. A lot of people will load their standbys first and then their actives, which will actually push out any frequencies that they have. So just be mindful of that. Load your frequencies so that you can go boom, 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 and you'll feel like a pro. So there you have it. Those are the five tips to help you make and look and feel like a pro flying your Cirrus. Anyway, a huge thanks to Amy Voss for helping film this. And you can follow her on Instagram at Voss A. Voss. You can follow myself on Instagram at Al.Waterloo. And we'll see you flying around. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have fun out there.